Today I'm going to show you how to make flux fur Christmas stockings like a pro. Here I will list all of the items you will need. If you don't have a stocking pattern, you can go ahead and draw one out, or you can screenshot mine and print it out. First I'm just drawing it out, and then I'm going to go around it and give a nice seam allowance. Here on your pattern that you label which one is your seam allowance and which one is your liner fabric. Now that you're done drawing and cutting out your pattern, you can go ahead and start cutting out all of your pattern pieces. Quite a few here since I will be making quite a few for Christmas and gifts this year. Let's go ahead and grab your first outer layer for your stocking. You're going to pin them together. I'm gonna to go ahead and use a different fabric to show you just how to pin it together and then we'll go back to the other fabric I will be using. This is just because the black doesn't show up too much on the camera. When you're pinning them together, make sure you pinch on one side and you stick it through the fabric and then go back up. This will help so that you don't get any bulges. With bulges, it's really hard to get your fabric even and later when you remove the pins, you notice that you've messed up somewhere and there's large gaps of fabric. I always like to pin all the way around the edges and then I put a pin directly in the middle, depending on how large the item is. I may add one or two. Now that we've got everything pinned, you're going to want to sew from the top corner all the way down to the other corner. Make sure you do not close the top part. Think of a sock, just like your sock, you need to have that opening to put your foot in. For your liner pieces, you can go ahead and use whatever you would like, silk, fuzz, furry, fur, it doesn't matter. Um, I did go ahead and swap mine out and I wanted to use this really pretty pink fuzzy one I have. I think that would look really nice with the gold and the black. You're going to see me using a Sharpie and I am just tracing around the outer layer. This layer is going to be for our inner layer, so you want to make sure that it fits inside the outer layer really nicely. You don't want it to bulge or look bad, um, especially because you are going to have a lot of items inside your stocking later. You can go ahead and remove the pins and then you can add the pins back once you remove the outer layer so that you just have your liner fabric here. Now just use your scissors and cut directly on that line. Make sure you do not give a seam allowance for this one. Once you're done cutting it out, you can go ahead and lay that stocking piece on the top just to make sure that it is a little bit smaller than the outer layer. I'm going to go ahead and mark this part with my Sharpie. You do not want to sew this piece. Now you can go ahead and start sewing it. I would recommend using a back stitch just because you want to make sure this does not come undone later. You're going to be having heavy items inside, gifts, candies. Whatever you're going to be using, you want to make sure that it's going to hold up well. Since these are hand sewn, sometimes the hand sewing can be a little bit more fragile than a sewing machine, so you just want to make sure you go back and do it thoroughly. Once you do your back stitch, you can go ahead and finish sewing all the way around, just like you did the other one, just leaving that space open in the middle of the foot so that we can flip it later. Now that we've sewn both of them, you can go ahead and take your liner fabric and flip it right side in. Now you're going to go ahead and grab those larger pom-poms and you're going to use your X-Acto knife and pop a hole in the stitches in the top. It's pretty easy to remove these. Um, I'm not really sure what is inside of here. At first I thought it was fiberglass, but someone told me that it was a different kind of stuffing. Um, I'm not really sure. You want to remove all that, use some tape and clean it up, and then you can go ahead and cut them in half, or if you want them thicker, you can go ahead and leave them. I went ahead and cut them in half since they are very thick already.
you're gonna want to cut all four of them exactly the same size. Once you have gone ahead and cut out all of your pieces, you're going to measure the top width of your stocking. Go ahead and double that size, and that will be the correct measurements that you will need for your flux for a ring. Make sure that you try your best to color match for your thread. I was able to find an exact match. Once you finish your flux for a ring, go ahead and slide it down onto the top of the stocking. Make sure that you line it up with your seams, on the left side, you're going to pin it, and then on the right side, you're gonna pin it, just like this. This will just help so when you add your slip cover on, which is going to be the inner lining, it will not move around and you won't lose your place. Now, you're not going to want to flip this one right side in, but you are going to want to slide it right over the top of the outer layer of the stocking. You're probably thinking, what is she doing? I promise you, this will look beautiful when it is done. That's why you left a hole in the bottom so you can flip it later. This part is a little bit tricky, but you're going to want to grab all three of those fabrics and pin them together right on the seams where you did it before. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in my camera so you guys can see a little bit closer but you're going to want to tuck down this fur and then pinch the fabrics together and close them off and then pin them down. If you're planning on adding your ribbon, now is a good time. You're going to want to put it on the front first layer. So the part you will see when you're looking at your stocking. There's a little video clip above so that you can see what I mean. Before attaching your ribbons, go ahead and burn off the ends just to make sure there's no fraying. And now you can go ahead and sew all the way around where you pinned. Now that you've completed sewing all the way around the top of the stocking where you've pinned, you can use that hole and flip your black part of your stocking through that hole and pull it. This will reveal the outer layer of your stocking. I'll go ahead and patch up that hole in the bottom and then you can put your liner fabric back inside and it looks like this. For the pom-poms, you're just going to take some squares and sew along all of the edges, making sure that you're not too close together so that when you pull it tight, it won't get snagged. Once you have finished going around all of the square, you can go ahead and pull it tight and you will have a super cute little pom-pom. Make sure after you finish pulling it, you're going to do a few stitches in the back and then you can tie it off. Repeat the process with the other one. This one is a bit smaller. You can use the same size or you can use different sizes. I wanted to do a larger one that went down farther and then a smaller one that was up towards the top of the stocking. These pom-poms are super cute and they are definitely universal where you can use them for just about any craft. They look great in your car. They're not just for stockings. You can make so many things with these pom-poms super easy and fun to make. Later this year, I will try my best to get a pom-pom tutorial in on how to make your own without using flux fur. Since I know a lot of people don't have access to flux fur, it is a little bit hard to come by, especially if you're looking for a particular color. You also can use fabric dyes or right dyes to color your flux furs. Now that you've finished your pom-poms, go ahead and make a point at the end of your ribbon and burn it off. Make sure that you melt it down pretty good. And while it's not too hot, you're going to pinch it. This will make kind of a plastic piece, but you won't see this. It'll be inside the back of the pom-pom. You can go ahead and sew your cute little pom-poms on. Make sure that you sew nicely in the back. Do small stitches so that it doesn't look bad if it accidentally gets flashed while it's hanging up. One of the worst things that I think that I could see would be pom-poms that are not finished in the back. You want a nice finish all the way around and a seamless stocking. Here is just an image reference, but I will show you how I use this stocking to make a smaller stocking. You're just gonna keep continuing to go around that seam and bringing it in smaller and smaller until you reach your desired size. One pattern, multiple sizes. Well, thank you guys so much. I hope you absolutely enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure that you stay tuned for part two.